So what I want to discuss is tramp ants. And, and there says there's, there's six uh, things that you need to know about the seven most difficult ants to control in the world. Um, so we're going to focus on four ants, and then we're going to focus on our protocols. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you the whole, my, my entire training on for my text is only eight pages long. That's it. There's nothing that you need to go crazy about about what we do. It's super simple, but it requires a fundamental shift, a paradigm shift in how you think about pest control and what you've been taught. And a lot of what you've been taught, it's 10 years old, and it's mostly convenient for, for growth, not really for control. And so that's what we're focused on. Um, tramp ants are, are a, a series of ants that basically hitchhike on cargo around the world. And that's how they get here. In case you didn't know, Florida has the largest fauna of ants in the country. We've got 200 ant species, 50% are, 50 are exotic, seven are a nightmare. So, so when, when it comes to our environment, we give them everything they need to thrive here. And this is why they're so difficult to control. So we're gonna discuss the behavior that's gonna help you understand why you're having control. Let's talk about big headed ant. Not a big problem in a lot of homes, but when you do have it, it's a nightmare, okay? One of the things that these all guys have in common is they got six traits in common. If you understand those traits, you can pretty much control them all. <laughs> chemical is not the solution. I want you to get chemical out of your head. It sounds weird. I'm not a chemical guy. I'm not a manufacturer coming here trying to sell you my chemical and say, here, use this chemical because it, it suits me because I need to sell it. I need to move it. It's on my, you know, cross the line product that I need to sell. I, I sell you a program that's actually integrated that's gonna help you get it controlled. But when you have a big headed ant problem, how many of you can identify a big headed ant? Okay, so everyone here pretty much can identify the big headed ant. Where people fall apart is the, the big headed ant, uh, the, the, the major worker is not always gonna be around. What you're gonna encounter is minor workers. And what people confuse that with is fire ant. You start treating it as a fire ant. Now, luckily, if you use extinguish, to control big head ant, it'll control. Extinguish alone. All right, so so when when you have, when you're seeing a lot of the big headed ants, what you're gonna see, uh, the actual big headed ant, the major worker, what you're gonna find out is that the colony probably is collapsing. You don't see that many of them. That's your indicator. So if you're doing service in a house, and all of a sudden you see a lot of minor workers, and you're coming back the following week, 10 days, to do the follow-up, you're going to find out that the indicator it's collapsing is you start seeing more minor, more major workers than minor workers. All right. The crazy ant. Okay. The crazy ant is, is a tramp ant species. Okay. It, it hitchhikes everywhere. Um, very, actually very easy to control. Surprisingly. Uh, all you really need to control that ant really max force complete will knock it out no matter where it is by itself. We're an exclusive zero indoor spray company. We haven't sprayed the inside of a home for any general pest in nine years now. I like that. <laughs> haven't done it. We don't need to. We, we control 99% of the pests, which is ants, roaches, and silverfish. is 95% of your problems. And then the only thing we really have to spray for is flea service. You got to do a surface spray. And tick. Ticks you can control on, on cracking crevice. But we're a zero spray company otherwise. We're 100% bait indoor. 100% and 50% and, and bait out there. So the ghost ant is going to be your number one nightmare. And we're going to discover why that is. Um, that little ant, um, which has one billionth of brain power, will kick your can all over the place uh, if, if you allow it. We control that zero spray in there. White footed ant. Back in 2009, it was like every other call I had was a white footed ant call. All of a sudden, two years later, that ant really, I, if I get two calls a year on white footed ant, we solve that with nothing more indoor and outdoor with nothing more than gel bait, really, uh, on the outside. It can be totally controlled, wipe it out, two shot with gel bait alone. But you gotta know how to do it. All right, so let's talk about the, 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 the biology. They're uni unicolonial, they're polygynous, they're polygynous, they're omnivorous, they all bud and they all fragment. And that is why everybody is failing. 
because they don't understand this part right here. This is this is the key for you to understand this. All right, so what's body? What's unit colonial? Think of it, this is a network hub, okay? And what they do is they will make multiple colonies. They don't make one. They're not like they're not like a fire ant or a, a red imported fire ant that has one or a, a carpenter ant that makes a satellite nest, but it can have a nest, a satellite nest inside and a nest outside. These guys make all multiple nests. Their, 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 their polygyny allows them to multiply very, 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 very quickly and be very efficient. Think of terrorist cells. Why can't we get terrorist cells? Because they're not structured like a military. They will branch off and do their own thing. And this is what happens. You will have one nest. You can have literally in one kitchen, you will have a nest in the shelf. You will have a nest behind that outlet. You will have another nest behind the microwave. You will have a nest that goes around the corner if you find it. It'll go 20, 30 feet and you'll go up to a corner of a, of, of a sliding door and that nest will be up there. Baseboard spraying for ghost ant is totally useless. Baseboard spraying for crazy ant inside is totally useless. Totally. Big headed ant inside spraying is totally useless. When you have a, a nest inside the wall and you're spraying, that nest is going outside. They're not coming in. And the frass, people all the time call and they say, well, I've got termite. Send me a picture. Nine times out of ten, they don't have termite. They have a big headed ant infestation. So they will make multiple queens and they will have multiple queens in the nest. They're not antagonistic. So they will share all the resources. But they, they, one of the things is that the, the, since they bud, and, and I'm not going to bore you too much with it, let's go back a little bit. Yeah. Um, they, they, they really share everything food, resource, queens, they share everything. And they'll share it with the network. So you wipe one out here, but you still have one here. In a couple of days, within a week, she will fragment this one because you sprayed the baseboard with a pyrethroid. And all of a sudden, she will fragment and, boop, 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 and you've got 10 more nests. And that's the challenge. Now, they're omnivorous. They'll eat carbs, proteins, sugars, carbohydrates. This is why these guys can survive anywhere. Anything. Other insects. You'll see beetles being destroyed by them, carried, roaches being carried. By these guys. So very hard to do, especially with big headed ant when you're using bait, because during certain seasons in, 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 in like late in the year, they'll switch from, from carbohydrate consumption to pure glucose consumption. And you're you're using a bait and you're saying, dang, it's not working. Um, we just wiped one out that must have had millions of ants around that property. Millions just they were just it was just crawling all over the place. And we went in with Max Force Complete. We treated that whole area around the farmhouse. They got 10 acres on that place. Huge house. Went in. Couldn't, they couldn't solve it. We went in. We just baited. Went back a week later. Found one big headed ant in that entire area, which was about 10 feet from the house. We couldn't find it. So, so it can be done completely more effectively. Here's what happens with budding. People confuse budding with fragmenting. Budding is a, is a natural reproduction that they use. We'll kick out a queen with brood, with workers, go start your own nest. Okay, that's budding. That's a natural occurrence in them. And this is why they're able to multiply so much because they're not antagonistic. They understand that, hey, we can work together and be more productive. What happens with fragmentation though, this fragmentation is usually an environmental response, a threat. So what happens for fragmentation is here's the here's the problem with with ghost ant. Customer has ghost ants. She's been trying to control it with tarot. The problem with tarot is they're consuming a five percent boric acid or, or tetrahydrate solution, and it's just wiping them out like that. They're not getting back to the nest. They're just dying. 
So what happens is she's treating, putting that there, and she's got the nest in the cabinet. Every time she slams that door shut, she's just fragmented that, that nest. It's that simple. She opened up the microwave, disturbed them. They're fragmented. This is why they're so difficult to control because people don't understand that biology. So by doing that and understanding that, that you need to really hunt for them is going to be um, the key. So that is the short course on the most ants you're going to deal with and the problem that we're dealing with with, um, with ant control because I guarantee you that the majority of callbacks are ant calls. Oh, my God.